Uh, we start this second video in 5.1 with a very important fact. This fact will allow us now to interpret all integrals in terms of signed area, regardless of whether the upper limit is smaller or larger than the lower limit. And this fact is here. The integral from b to a of f of x dx is negative 1 times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. You can just turn over the, the switch the upper and lower limits and multiply the, uh, that result by negative 1. So for example, if we had uh, the integral from 3 to minus 1 of 2x dx, we could go to the trouble of saying this is minus 1 times the integral from minus 1 to 3 of 2x dx. And this you would calculate just the way you did yesterday. And you would get 8, and so our answer would be negative 8. Another way to think of this, instead of uh, actually flipping the integral over and multiplying by minus 1, you can think of it as the integral from 3 to negative 1. You can think of this as integrating from right to left instead of left to right. And of course, the net effect of multiplying the signed area by minus 1 will be that areas above the x-axis give a negative contribution and areas below the x-axis give a positive contribution. So in this case, in calculating this integral, we have the picture drawn there. The area here is 9. You can do that yourself. The area of the smaller triangle is 1. So we're just thinking, well, we're going right to left, so we will have a negative contribution of the 9 plus a positive contribution of 1, and we get negative 8. I like to think of it that way. Uh, what we're going to do now is go through some properties of integrals that are very handy in uh, aiding you in calculating them. I think it's best to think of most of these properties in terms of words rather than trying to memorize uh, notation here. This first property tells us that the integral of the sum is the same as the sum of the integrals, similar to what you learned in Calc 1. The derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. The same is true for integrals. So for example, the integral from minus 3 to 3 of 2 plus sine x dx, the graph is drawn for you here. Now, from if we look at the region, from my lines aren't very vertical there, are they? If we look at this region right here, we quickly see, well, yes, we can interpret this integral as signed area, but we don't know how to calculate it. We don't have a formula for finding areas of regions like that. So uh, in this case, we could be helped out by using this handy fact. This integral is equal to the integral from minus 3 to 3 of 2 dx plus the integral of minus 3 to 3 of sine x dx. Now sine x is an odd function. From minus 3 to 3, it looks like this. And if we were to draw this out, we see that our negative and our positive contributions would be equal. So this part here is simply equal to 0. So all we need to do is calculate the integral from minus 3 to 3 of 2x dx. Well, that's just a rectangle of height 2 and width 6. So that's 12. And our answer then is the signed area, the integral from minus 3 to 3 of 2 plus sine x dx, is simply uh, 12. Now you do these out slower if you need to, uh, but we saw that splitting them up, we didn't need a formula for finding the area of that curvy region. Uh, we were able to turn it into the sum of, the, well, to the area of a rectangle. Another property that complies, that uh, applies to continuous integrands, in other words, the function is, is continuous over the interval, a, b, that the integral of the product of a constant times the function is the constant times the integral of the function. This is very similar to what you learned in Calc 1. 
you learn that the derivative of a constant times a function f is the same as the constant times the derivative. Same holds for integrals. Sometimes this is very handy just for hand calculations. For example, in this problem, I would factor out the 1 fifth and write this as the integral from minus 1 to 4 of 1 minus x dx. Now, y equals 1 minus x is very easy to graph. You're going to get, have negative positive contributions of areas of triangles and To save time, I'm not going to draw the picture of y equals 1 minus x and do those calculations. What we, you would get would be 1 fifth, and then the signed area represented by that integral is 2, positive contribution of 2, negative contribution of 9 halves, and multiplying this together, we have minus 1 half is the value of the integral in question. So factoring out that one-fifth can really make hand calculations a lot easier. A third property, property of integrals, uh, where f and g are continuous on the closed interval a, b, is that if f is less than or equal to g, the functional values, then the integral of f will be less than the integral of g. The best way to remember this is just by drawing a little picture. Let's say this is our function g on the top, and maybe this is f on the bottom, and we have a here and b here. Uh, let me color in yellow the integral of g, the integral of g from a to b would be the yellow, the area trapped by the vertical lines, and g and the x-axis, and let me color in blue the the integral of f. So here we have trapped under f, the x-axis, and the lines. You can clearly see here that the blue region has a smaller uh, signed area than does the yellow. And the pictures would be more complicated if I drew them in different quadrants or had some positive contribution, some negative, but just use the simplest case to remember a property like this. A fourth property is very, very handy. We can break up an integral using its interval of integration. Uh, let's first of all draw this simplest case here. If, if we have a graph y equals f of x. Again, I'll just be simple and use quadrant 1. And we have a here, and c is between a and b. As stated above, we see, well, let's see, the integral from a to b of f of x dx would be the region, the signed area of the region I shaded in pink. But look at the integral from a to c this region, and then add to that the integral from c to b, and we get exactly the same thing. So this is easy for you to picture. However, what's interesting is that c really does not have to be between a and b. So I want to draw you a picture of that, too. Let's say that this is our function here, and this is a and I'll put b to the right of it just to be simple. But let's put c over here to the left of a and see why this is true. The integral from a to b is this that's shaded in blue, as you can see. Now I'll switch colors, and let's do the integral. I'm going to do these two right here. The integral from a to c. Oh, well, in this case, we're going integrating from right to left. So this region here would be a negative contribution. And the integral from c to b, well, there we go left to right, from c back to b. So using what we just proved over here, we or, or noticed that that would be the integral from c to a plus the integral from a to b. And you see that these two canceled each other out. 
So what we're left with is exactly the same region as we had just integrating from A to B. So it doesn't matter if C is in between A and B. You can always break up an integral, uh, an interval of integration, as long as the function f is continuous over all intervals concerned. And here's some example problems where we would use the properties that we've just had. We're given the integral of a function f over three different intervals. The interval 0, 2, 1, 2, and 2, 4. So to make life easier for myself, not having to look up at all that notation, I would draw a line and put 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I know the integral from 0 to 2, and we are given the integral from 1 to 2. So we know this one from 0 to 2, we know this one from 1 to 2, and we are given the value of the integral from 2 to 4. So I just draw those little arrows, and now I can look back up at those instead of all of that notation. Here in problem 1, I'm asked to find the integral from 1 to 4. Okay, so let me get pink. I want to find from 1 to 4 here. Well, I can see that from my arrows. It's going to be the integral from 1 to 2 of f plus the integral from 2 to 4 of f, and that is the integral from 1 to 2 is negative 1, plus the integral from 2 to 4 is 7, and we have an answer of 6. We have no idea what this function looks like. They just give us the value of some of its uh, integrals. Okay, then the second example, well, I don't see right away that it fits uh, my drawing above because of the 2, but I can use the property that the sum of the integrals, or the integral of the sum is the sum of the integrals. And I'll write this as the integral from 0 to 1 of f minus the integral from 0 to 1 of 2 dx. Well, this is just, this signed area is very easy. It's just a rectangle of length 2 and width 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. I know that. Uh, signed area, and the integral from 0 to 1 of f. Well, let's see. I'm going to get another color so I won't confuse you here. We're looking for the integral from 0 to 1 of f. Well, I can see that's going to be the integral from 0 to 2 minus the integral from 1 to 2. So I'll write the integral from 0 to 2 of f minus the integral from 1 to 2 of f minus 2, which gives me the integral from 0 to 2 was 2, minus the integral from 1 to 2 was negative 1, minus 2, so I have 3 minus 2 is 1.